going to show you some techniques that are very um, advanced to get you to double your flexibility in a very short period of time. Does anyone have a, is anyone really stiff? Does anyone have stiffness? Okay, good. I mean, I'm sorry to hear that. Because we're going to use you <laughs> as a demonstration. Um, how many of you have a lot of tight muscles, like your muscles, same people? Okay. <laughs> How many of, of you have tried the P90X and end up hurting yourself? <laughs> yeah, it's a real intense exercise. And then they have the Insanity one. Oh, Insanity, I've seen it's Merkel. Yeah, well, look at the, the, the ages of the people doing it are probably 18. They're not really meant for anyone over the age of 50 or 40 or 30. You're just going to hurt yourself. Um, so today we're going to talk about um, some really good techniques and I'm just stalling a little bit to get my microphone. But as we go through this, I'm, I'm going to record this so if anyone wants to watch it, because there's a lot of techniques, you can just view it. I'll give you a little code to watch it over and over again. Because the last time I did this, people were saying, why didn't you record it? I want to see it over and over again. Um, because you can use these techniques in any part of your body. Um, has anyone ever been in a whiplash injury and you're kind of stiff because of it? Anyone? OK. <laughs> I'm going to use you. You're, you're a good demo. Um, <laughs> A wreck. <laughs> tell you. Does anyone have really, really, really tight hamstrings? Okay. All right. So I just need because we need demonstrations. We want to demonstrate this. Um, so we've all been taught when we stretch, we should stretch before we work out, and you would just take the muscle and stretch it out, right? And you're going to loosen up. I have people that stretch every single day for like years and years, and they just Stiffen right back up like a rubber band. Like, why is that? So we're going to show you some techniques. The first thing I'm going to talk about, because I have to write some things down, I'm going to kind of go a little bit out of order, is I'm going to talk about um, just a general technique you can use for a stiff neck. Does anyone have like a really stiff neck right now? Can I, that is willing to come up here and just use you as a demonstration so I can show you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Only if you're going to fix it, I'm good. Okay, good. So, um, Ouch. I didn't touch you. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to have you just tuck your head forward, and that's about it, right? Is that as far as it goes? Is it supposed to go further? <laughs> yeah, okay, that's fine. Yep, okay, that's go, it. go back all the way. Okay, so just from what you did, do you feel, uh, which way is Tyler going forward or back? Forward. Yeah, can you see that? Can you see her? I mean, she just can't even go, go to the side, go forward. Can you see that? There's just no flexion. Go back. She's good on, on extension. So go ahead and face forward. Um, did you have some accidents or injuries or something? Mm -hmm. Okay, what happened? Was it a whip? It was a car wreck, yeah. Were you rear-ended or did you hit someone? Um, front end. Okay, so you... Front end, both cars. You, you hit someone and you're, you, hit, you hit something, right? Right, so I was actually sitting still and she was looking for a parking spot and not paying attention and you're sitting there waiting going, please don't hit me, please don't hit me. She pulled right to the front of my car. Okay, so what happens is her head went forward first and then went back. So um, what happened, when, it's very important to know the mechanism of injury because if she got hit from the front and her head goes forward, the damage is going to be in the back part right through here. So it's going to go forward like this and damage all these little things right here. So what we don't want to do is stretch a damaged muscle. So here's the rule number one, never stretch a damaged muscle because it has scar tissue. It's going to come back like a rubber band. In your body, all the muscles to create movement are to have an on switch and an off switch. So if we look at her arm right here, go ahead and contract that muscle and then bring it down and just keep doing that. So when she contracts, this is activating. Anytime this activates, this has to automatically turn off. So there's a switch here. When this turns on, this has to turn off or it's not going to move. And then when she does this, this is activating and this is turning off. So we have this on, off, on, off situation. If we stretch her head going forward, we're going to activate something in her muscles that are going to make it tighter. It's going to make it worse. And the way they teach us in school is the exact opposite way that I found that really works. Thank you. OK. 
Okay. So, um, so the first principle we're going to teach you is that you want to always stretch the opposite muscle. Now, this goes against what you would be taught, but just watch what happens when we do this. Um, so we don't want to stretch going into going forward because it doesn't want to move that way. We want to stretch going backwards. So I'm going to actually have you just gently take your forehead and just stretch back a little bit. Yeah, and then relax. And then stretch back. Okay, and relax. I'm just going to do it. Just I'm just going to show you something. I'm just going to stretch your back this way. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. See, I'm stretching it in, in the good direction. So we're just going to stretch it about seven times. So you stretch and then you relax. It sounds crunchy. It does. <laughs> like Rice Krispies. Yes, it does. What call is that? Car, uh, when you have these uh, grinding sounds, you have um, two things. One is the cartilage is breaking down from an injury, or it could be a B1 deficiency. When you're vi vitamin B1 deficient, you'll get popping in the joint. But there's also could be just cartilage in there grinding. You, you hear a lot in the knees. Okay, now sit this way. Okay, and then tilt your head forward. Wow. See how much better that is? Do you feel that? Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's have you face this way. Do I have that microphone? <laughs> okay, good. Do we have this? Okay, I'm going to turn this on. Okay, good. So here's what I want you to do right now. I want you to tuck your head forward and backwards. Okay? And notice what motion is restricted. Okay? All right, now how many of you are stiff going forward? Raise your hand. Okay, how many are stiff going backwards? Okay, how many are normal both ways? Okay, then don't worry about it. <laughs> if you're normal, don't, you don't have to mess with it. For those of you that are stiff going backwards, you're going to be stretching your head. I'm sorry, if you're stiff going forward, you're going to stretch your head back, and you can just touch your chin here and go back. For those of you that can't go back, you're going to do forward. You're going to stretch it forward like this. Okay? Just about seven times. Go ahead and do that. You stretch and relax. Just a short little stretch and relax. Yeah, good. Keep doing that. Okay. Now go ahead and just recheck your, your motion. Tell me what happened. Better. Better? Yeah. It's a very safe way of stretching. We're going to do this with your whole body, just FYI. We're going to do it just so, starting with one, one muscle at a time. Now, she was involved in a pretty, I guess, a pretty bad accident. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's a one little step. If you've been in an accident, what you can do is you can take... Um, just your fingers underneath this little bone right here called the clavicle. And you can stretch it back. Stretch your head back again. Good. Go forward. Go back. Good. Forward. Back. That good. feels so good. Just tell me when to stop. <laughs> okay. We're going to be here a long time. <laughs> so right underneath your clavicle. So what is this doing? I'll show you. So when you press underneath your clavicle here, and you stretch back, there's a lot of tension in scar tissue underneath that little breast, uh, that breastbone. It's called the clavicle. Um, and you want to start um, like right here, real close, and lift up. And then start going more out, outward. And by the way, I'm not flipping you off. Okay. Come back like this. You're moving further, closer to your shoulders out this way? Yes. Okay, okay now face that way. 
Go ahead and move your head forward. Is that better? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a lot better. Good. Let's have you face this way. So what happens is stress gets stuck in your body. It gets stuck. It accumulates. Where does it accumulate? In areas of old injury, of areas of stiffness, areas of old uh, trauma. Uh, anyone break a bone before? Okay. Anyone sprain an ankle? Okay. Has anyone um, ever had a C-section before? Don't raise your hand. Okay. Uh, what about uh, a sore throat? Okay. Tonsillectomy. It just goes on and on and on. That's where you will hold your stress later in life. You've, have you found that when you start getting into your 50s, you get stiffer and stiffer? Have you found that out? <laughs> It's just because stress accumulates in old areas. So we're going to show you how to deal with that because um, you start waking up and you're stiff. That energy gets stuck there. You're not going to be able to sleep at night. You can't sleep if you're all stiff and tight. Um, anyone pr have problems sleeping at night? OK. Because when you're sleeping, your neck is all stiff. You're just not going to relax. Um, so we want to, the goal is to get every single muscle in your entire body fully relaxed when you're sleeping. Okay? You guys have a, it's going to be a long seminar today, but. <laughs> so we have this neck. Now it's actually better. She's going to find that when she goes through stress for the day, it's not going to just hold in her neck as much anymore, just from that little thing that I did. But she's going to do this each day until it's completely gone. We want full range of motion. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go um, look to the right and look to the left. Notice where the stiffness is. Raise your hand if you're stiff going to the right. OK, raise your hand if you're stiff going to the left. OK. It would be pretty interesting if, if everyone was over here. What's that? Both? Can you call 911? No. <laughs> so here's what you're going to do. If you're stiff to the right, I'm going to have you just Stretch to the opposite side about seven times. If you're stretched to the opposite side, just stretch to the other side about seven times. Just stretch and relax. Stretch into the good side. When you're talking about stiffness, do you mean only in the neck? Because like when we're doing all these neck things, I feel it all in my back. And yeah, we're gonna we're gonna work down, okay. but yeah. So, but still, um, but of course, when you stretch, do it very gently. Just in, go into the good side. And you should hold it for maybe a half a second. So when you stretch, half a second. Just kind of, you're just pushing it into that side and you're letting it go. Now you stretch on both sides? Is that wrong? Oh yeah, you just want to do the side. You want to find the area that you're stiff in and go to the opposite. So go ahead and look to the right and to the left. Do you notice any restriction either side? No, it's pretty good. It seemed pretty, left. yeah, it seems pretty good. Bad demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> so how many found that your neck is moving a little better now? OK, good. All right, so now the next one is going to be uh, head, ear to your shoulder and ear to the shoulder this way. It's tight going one side. Both. Both? If there's one that's stiff to one side, go to the other side and stretch that now. Uh, if it's both, don't don't do it yet. I need to show you what to do. We have the stretchers coming. We'll pull you out in the now. Good. Now just see how your neck, see, tell me, raise your hand if it's a little bit looser now. Okay, good. If you did this to every single part of your body at the end of it, you would just want to take a nap. It's very relaxing. Okay, so now, so we have the neck. Uh, now let's talk about the shoulders, the traps back here. Um, does anyone have really tight traps back here? Yeah. 
How many of you kind of get a massage and it comes right back the next day? Yeah. Does anyone have more right shoulder pain? Okay. Does anyone have left? Okay. Now, I'm not diagnosing you, but if it's the left side, a lot of times it's the heart. <laughs> now, what happens when the heart is tired because you're not sleeping, it works harder and it anchors itself to your back on that side, and it'll stiffen up on the left side and sometimes go down the left arm. Does anyone that has left shoulder pain also have a problem sleeping? Okay. Um, don't let me forget because I want to show you what to do about that. Does anyone have a right shoulder pain? Okay. All right. So um, let's see. You have one. Do you crave? Do you crave fatty foods? No, it's an injury. Injury? Okay. Did you say you have right shoulder? Mm -hmm. Do you have, crave fatty foods? No. Okay. Do you get any bloating when you eat? Um, no. Do you get any bloating when you eat? Would you tell me if you did? No. <laughs> <laughs> what happens? The right shoulder is connected to something in your gallbladder, and so. Here, for those of you that have a right shoulder problem, took mine out. you took it out, then you're good to go. Now, so um, is it possible we can do a de quick demo on you? Sure. Okay, yeah. let's right. have you sit right there because we want to come back to you. This is a really uh, cool technique for people that have shoulder problems. Have a seat right here. Because if we work on the wrong problem, it takes a long time. So I don't want to work on the wrong problem. I had a shoulder problem for 12 years. Little did I know it was coming from my gallbladder. Now, if you don't have a gallbladder, all he has is a little duct between his liver and his small intestine. That's always going to be a little bit of a, a weak link. So just um, kind of right now, do you feel it tight on your right side? Yes. OK. Is it tight when you move it or just when you're sitting there? Um, when I move it. OK. Can you go ahead and just move it and just kind of describe? Is it kind of a little stiff right there? Top half. OK. So we'll bring that right over here. Actually, we can keep it right here. Yeah, that works a good. Thank you. OK, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you um, what to do for right shoulder pain. And I'm going to do it for you, but you can do it to yourself. Um, because he doesn't have a gallbladder, um, we're just going to just uh, take my hand and over the area where he had the problem and just kind of hold it, some pressure right there because we're just going to open up that little duct right there. And it might be a little bit sore, just a little bit. Is that a little bit sore? OK. It's next to the splenic flexure. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just, <laughs> just kidding. No, it's right underneath your rib cage, just slightly off the midline to the uh, right. So it's right underneath the rib cage. About right here. <laughs> if you've got a scar, it's pretty easy. To find. It's right over the scar. <laughs> How many inches is your scar over from the midline? It's about an inch below the rib cage, right off the midline on the right side. It's right over that little spot. I'll draw a picture of it. Now, as I'm pressing this, I want you to move your shoulder and tell me if there's any difference in range of motion yet. A little, yeah. A little less pain. Okay. Okay, so if we were to work on his shoulder, it would take a long time. This is much quicker. <laughs> I had someone, because um, I, I had a gallbladder problem, sluggish gallbladder, and I had my shoulder worked on therapy for years. Nothing ever did anything until someone showed me about this. I, a little massage, it all went away completely, and my shoulder problem. I've had people had surgery in the shoulder, but it was really referred pain, because there's a nerve that goes from here all the way up to your neck. And it can come in the shoulder blade right here or all through here. So a lot of times things can be referred. So what I would do if I were you, I would get some type of massage device or even your fingers and kind of just massage it each day for about probably a week. And you probably will not have any pain in your shoulder anymore. Hmm. So thanks for coming up. Thank you. Sure. So if we look at the gallbladder, here's the, the rib cage here. 
and then we have the gallbladder that comes right here. So, but we have a little duct that comes right here. So this is the midline, this is the belly button right here. So you would want to press right there. So what destroys the gallbladder is a lot of fatty foods. And so one of the problems is when you combine... You need to just lift that up just a little bit. Yeah, I saw that. I'm going to trip on this thing here. Um, if you have fatty foods, if you um, combine a lot of um, carbohydrates with sugar, that's not good on the gallbladder. In college, the only thing that I ate green was pistachio ice cream and lime green jello. I never ate a vegetable. We had deep fry night every night. And uh, we all had bad acne. And I got a recipe from my grandmother um, for meatloaf. But of course, I never read the directions. I already know how to do it. I just go ahead and start making it. I didn't know you had to drain the grease. So I would be eating all this grease all through college. And then one morning, actually at 2 o'clock in the morning, I woke up with this severe pain right, right here. Little did I know it was my gallbladder. And that's when it all started to go downhill. I had Rolaids, all these things. So then 12 years later, someone told me about that, and I started working on that. All my shoulder pain went away. So that's, that can refer to the right shoulder. Now, if you have a lot of stiffness in your shoulder blades right here, Many times that's digestion. So does anyone have it on both sides? Can I borrow you? <laughs> so how do you know for sure? It's like right, right here. Oh, you have it on the left side? Both. I thought you said both. both. Okay, so okay good. This, right, right there? Here. Okay, we'll use you as a demonstration. <laughs> how do we know if it's the digestion? Well, we're going to go ahead and do a little acupressure and then see if it goes away. But if we try to stretch this right here, and it's down here, it's just never going to work. So can you give me a number, like 10 being really tight, 0 being no tightness, how would you rate it right now? Um, maybe 6. 6? OK. So um, what we're going to do is we're just going to come right up underneath here and just kind of hold pressure. Now, one of the symptoms of uh, digestive congestion down here is that you have bloating when you eat you feel like you're pregnant when you're eating. Does anyone have that sensation? Yeah. Sometimes. Also, you get burping, belching, bloating. Other than that, you're perfectly fine. Also, you have a need for some sweet after you eat. Does anyone have that? OK. <laughs> so you just go right there, because you have the stomach here. Right there. Is that sore? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, while I hold this, if you, does your left shoulder feel any different right now as I'm doing this? I hadn't thought about it, but maybe a little. I don't even know what. Well, you gave me a, a little six. sensation. Yeah. You gave me a six. What is it now? Maybe a five. And not, okay. Not a ton different. To be okay. Honest. Then we probably it's probably not digestion. Do you have a digestive issue? I don't think so. Yeah. Then we just rolled it out. It's not digestion. Then it so feels a little tight. Are those the same muscles that when you like sit at your computer all day, all like cranked up? Is that it right? can be. Yes. Yeah. So and we're going to show you how to deal with that. But if it's referred from your digestion, we could do all this all day long. It's not going to work. My shoulders are about an eight. You're eight, really? <laughs> okay. We'll use you next. So now, um, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to loosen up the shoulders. So the principle is that any time you have a tight muscle, if we have a muscle right here, and then we have an op every muscle has an opposing muscle, and they work on an on-off switch. Any time we have a tight muscle, we always stretch the opposite, OK? So now we have the traps, which are right up here. Those are really tight. How, what, what is the opposite muscle of the trap? What's that? It's down here. It's underneath your arms. So the trap moves this up, so the muscles underneath the arm push it down. The name of the muscle is called the lat, the latissimus dorsi. So, there's several ways that you can stretch this. 
we could have him hang or with his arms and stretch it up like this and just kind of relax that. Let's just check this side right through here. Let me stretch this one here. Stretch right here. I know. <laughs> we can stretch it like that, or I can stretch it up like this. Okay, just relax your shoulders. Put your arms down. Okay. Does that mean someone has to do it for us? I'm going to show you how to do it to yourself, too. Oh. But this is just, I'm just going to do it for time's sake. So that little pressure point under there. Yeah. Well, here, I here I, <laughs> yes, I do. Here's the thing. When you, when you press like this on the opposite muscle, it always will be twice as tender. It's just going to be real sore. Yeah, that's really tender. Right there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Relax your shoulders. Don't help me. <laughs> <laughs> Let them go. I'm trying. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's hard. Right there. Okay. So tell me what your shoulders feel like right now. Better. Better? It's like a three. Three? Okay, now what I'm going to do is if you can sit right there for me. Here's how you would do it yourself. We would want to get your elbows locked. And you might be able to do it on the chair. Let me see if you can do it on the chair. I guess you would have to lean forward like this. But you want to keep your elbows locked and, and uh, let your stretch your arms going upward like this. I'll do it on the table. Elbows locked. That, that, she's doing it correct. So you just let your shoulders come up and you stretch going up. So I'm stretching the muscles underneath my arms. See that? Yeah, now let your butt sink down. Yeah, be careful. <laughs> Keep your elbows locked. I know. Yeah, the edge of your bed. So yep. Should I feel the same sensation I felt? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a little bit stiff. But what we're doing is we're stretching the opposite muscle to your traps. And this will just, I mean, your shoulders are going to feel nice and relaxed. Mine actually feel pretty good. Oh, the lat pull down using weights, that's strengthening it. We want to stretch it, elongate it. We don't want to contract it. Well, you want to um, not, you want to be able to stretch it. The best thing would be hanging on something and letting it, like a door handle, and let it stretch right here, because that will um, loosen the trap up, okay? So we want to stretch the under, uh, underarm right there. But now, the, um, I would do it for probably no more than a minute. Yeah, and we just want to relax Multiple your shoulders. Multiple times or just once? Once. Just let it relax. Relax your head. And you want to stretch these going upward. Now, the other muscles that oppose back here are the uh, muscles underneath the pec. Okay? So this one, he can do it himself. You can take your fingers right here. And then tilt uh, right here. Let's see, on the, uh, a little bit higher, right there. Higher. Okay, now go back. Just tilt your head back. Oh, that's tender. Yeah. Good. Now come out a little bit. Come right here. This is going to hurt him more than it's going to hurt me. I mean, <laughs> that's sore, isn't it? But I never feel it. I know, I know. Let's try this other one. You're pressing just below the clavicle? Yeah. The pec muscle attaches to the clavicle. So we want to do we want to get that attachment. Okay, now let's see what your shoulders feel like now. Side to side's really good. The sides are good? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so this is well, just... This, now I, I always go between my shoulder blades. Hopefully you'll go there next. Yes, we're going to go there next. <laughs> now, I'm going to... Um, I want you to sit right there because we're going to come back to you. I want to um, do a demo on someone who has poor posture. Sydney, have you come up here? Okay, great. Have a seat right here. Now, what do your parents tell you when you're slouching? Sit up straight. 
That's bad advice. Because we want to do the opposite. Yeah, I know. They were telling you it backwards. Think about it. Your muscles are pulling on the front this way. Why we want to press against gravity and we're going to just, it's going to come back like a rubber band. We have to go into the area that it's, it's easier to go into. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you um, bring your legs out a little bit, like. a little wider, because you're going to stretch slouching. You're going to just put your hands to your legs and just slouch, slouch more. Put your head down and just slouch all the way down. <laughs> Good. Come up. Good. Slouch more. Good. Now, stand right here for me. I'm going to show you. This is how you do it. Rounding my back, going all the way down this way. Slouch as much as you can. Do that about 10 times. Why does it make you yawn? Because it's going to make you tired. <laughs> You're going to relax more. This is one of the best exercises to make someone sit up straight. Just round that back. And you can tell your kids to slouch more when they're slouching. If you want to completely relax, you almost want to, like, want to push your back You want to back push up. your back up. And make it a hunchback. I feel that. You feel that? <laughs> yeah, you're going to feel it because rarely are you going to like push it to that extreme. Okay, now. Okay, so now go ahead and sit up normal and just tell me what you feel like. My back feels better. Your back feels better? Do you feel like you're sitting up easier? Yeah. Good. How many of you feel like you're sitting up taller? It's pretty cool. Great. So thank you for coming up. So again, you want to slouch more if you see. Now, the other thing that makes people um, slouch more is a tired heart. So the heart gets tired. Do you have any sleeping problems? Can I use you as a demo? OK. The way to fix like left shoulder pain or like a tired heart is to get someone to sleep. Um, and then do you, how many hours of sleep do you get? pretty interrupted. I'm in bed for like nine hours, but I probably sleep like four. Or five. Really? Yeah. Is it, does pain wake you up or what happens? Just wake just up tense. and wide awake. Just wide awake? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, let me just, let me just check this right here so I can see what I'm going to do here. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, I'm going to just going to, I'm just going to check to see how much tension she has in her body. Let me just see here. Okay. There's a lot of cement. <laughs> Wow, this is tight. All through here. Now, tell me a little bit, have you ever had a whiplash? No. Do you ever fall on your tailbone? No. Never, as a, even as a child? Not that I know. I'm trying to figure out where this tension came from. Well, it's called NSF. Okay. <laughs> Work tension? Really? Yeah. I think so. It looks so stress-free when you're on the outside of the building. I did a seminar at the Library of Congress, and I'm like, wow, librarian, it's such a stress-free environment. She goes, you, you have no idea. It is like massive stress. Now, what I'm doing, and I'm going to show you how to do this as well, but I am uh, kind of relaxing um, the neck just because this is the area that will keep someone sleep, uh, uh, not being able to sleep deeply enough mm -hmm. right through in here. Does that feel okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to I'm just going to stretch this way going forward a little bit. The most important thing is we have to make sure we don't mess up the hair. <laughs> There's no way she's going to be able to sleep with this neck being that stiff. So I'm just lifting the head going forward. And you can do this with your fingers right here. Done this 
demonstration before and I've been doing it pretty much every night. I don't know why it doesn't go away. Um, Maybe it's just I think I need to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. This thing is so tight right here. Okay, now, there's a test that I would do if I had it hooked up that would measure how much stress she has in, inside her body. Um, I can't tell, but there's a thing called the flight or fight mode. Does anyone know what that means? Mm -hmm. That is located in your back, in your mid-back. Mm -hmm. That's the next thing we're going to work on. It's not loosening up, okay? So there's <laughs> something else going on. If you are under stress for many years, you are going to build up stress in your nervous system, and you're going to get what's called flight or fight, which is you're in this low tolerance, um, big ball of stress, and it's going to affect your patience, your tolerance for stress. People get on your nerves. How many know anyone like that? Okay. So what we're going to do is, and she could do this uh, maybe over a foam roller, but I'm going to do it just for her with my fingers. I'm going to have her look up to the ceiling and stretch back. Good. Go forward. Did you hear that? Good. Go back. We're just going to stretch over this, her mid-back. Come back all the way. Look up to the ceiling. Good. Go forward and back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go back. Just tell me when to stop. Okay. Okay. Can I just keep you? <laughs> I'll lend you my, my, the hands. You can just borrow them. Oh, right. right there. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right there. That feels really good. It's, it's just going to take a lot of tension off your cardiovascular system because the, <clears throat> the stress nervous system goes right to the heart. Two more times, all the way back. Hold that right there. Good. One more time. Okay. Okay, one more time. Right there. Okay, now. Yeah. Now your neck is like uh, butter. Look at how loose that is now. It's like we sprayed WD-40. So her neck was tight because she was in flight or fight mode. I mean, it's just so soft in her neck right now. So she could get a foam roller and stretch like right here, like maybe in the back of your couch. It's a little, you can get it at Kmart. Am I static or do yes. I roll it? Okay. Uh, you're static, like right here, okay. and you stretch maybe two or three times and then low, lower it. I see. And then start going pivot over that point. But that's what you need. Okay. Do you feel a little more relaxed? Yes, thank you. Good, you're welcome. Could you turn her to the side so we can wear that roller? What's that? Do we lie on the ground or over the uh, You can do on the ground, you can do on your bed, you can do on the couch. You just need to put the roller right here and stretch over it. You just need a pivot point. So what I did for her is I just can't, went back, look up to the ceiling, good, go forward, and then back, and I'm just doing this. Go back, back all the way, back. So when we do it, should we push? Um, no, um, you can take your arms and just leverage yourself back like this. Let gravity kind of come back. Do it on a chair, like you can do it on the chair, yes, you can do it on the chair. But it's hard to do it all the way down. You need to do it from here, 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 here. But her neck right now is better. totally melted. Can you imagine if we worked on the neck? It would be an hour with massage. It wouldn't get anywhere. Right. So thanks for coming up. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. But you might need this. Okay, so we have the, um, the mid-back, the posture. Um, does anyone have any shoulder pain um, or elbow pain or wrist pain? No? Okay. Good. Now we're going to get into the, um, the lower back. Does anyone have low back pain? Okay. Do um, you have low back pain? Off and on. Off and on. Does anyone have back pain now? Okay, you have it? Mid back? I'm looking for a low back. Right here? You have it? Can you come up? Okay. Does that hurt when you go this way? Not so much. How about this way? Mm, yeah, that way. Okay. Good. We got something. So we found an area that he can go into. So, but going forward, does that hurt going forward? Yep. Okay. And then going back to? Yep. Did you have a disc problem? No, I have sciatica. Which side? Um, the left side. 
Okay, that's pain down the um, down the back of the leg. But down this way, it, it's okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So we're going to take and go into the good direction and just kind of stretch them that way a little bit. And tell me if that's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to stretch this about five times. We don't want to go into the area that hurts. Two more times. Okay, now go in, go to the right side, see if it's a little bit better. Yes, a little bit. I couldn't even do this before I came up here. Okay, good. So that feels better. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what about going forward? Yeah, that still hurts. Still hurts? Okay. So if you could sit right, um, can you stand up one more second? Mm -hmm. I want to just have you sit right here. Okay. This is not part of the seminar, but I'm just going to show you one little tip. Um, you remember we don't want to work on the area that hurts. We work on the opposite. What is the opposite of the low back? The stomach. So what we're going to do is we're going to just work on the stomach muscles. So um, where's your belly button? Okay, okay, you moved it. Okay. Now I'm just going to press right here. Is that sore there? Mm -hmm. Right in there? Mm -hmm. And this is something he would do. He's going to press in about an inch below his belly button right there. Right there. Mm -hmm. Just don't do this with a knife. <laughs> now, let me tell you what I feel. I feel a lot of tension on the left side, right here. Feel that? Mm -hmm. That's where he has a sciatica. So there's a lot of tension on his left side. That's what's causing the sciatica. His other side, there's nothing. Now, I just did a little bit. Let's go ahead and stand up and just see if it's, tell me if it's a little bit better when you go forward. Yeah. Okay, so that's what you would want to do. So thanks for coming out. Oh. I was, okay. um, but you would want to take um, some type of massage tool, your fingers, and press right on the opposite. It works like a charm. So anytime it hurts over here, you work over here. But um, the other thing is that if you have low back pain, and let's say you can't go back, go forward and stretch going forward. If you can't go forward, then stretch back. It's uh, very simple. Now, the other thing I want to show you is um, tight hamstring. Anyone have tight hamstrings? OK, you do? Let's come right up. OK, don't sit down yet. Come right here. Good. <clears throat> now, um, I want you just to show us, just keep your hands on your thighs, and just kind of go down. And let me see how far you can go. Okay, what is that, about, about 13 inches from the ground? Do you see that? Can everyone see that? Okay, let's have you come up. All right, so his hamstrings, I like to indicate your hamstrings are tight. Okay. <laughs> now, what are we going to do? What are we going to stretch? The opposite, the quadricep. Are they? Okay, so let's have you stand right here. I'm going to show you how to do this. We're going to take his hand on the chair, and we're going to take his foot, and we're just going to stretch like this, okay? Relax it, stretch, relax. So if you could stand right here, and yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Try to stretch, and then relax a little bit. Good. Stretch it. Do that five times. Good. Stretch it really good. Yeah, he's tight both sides. Yeah. Starting to cramp. <laughs> okay, then do do the other side. Do that five times. Grab right here. Yeah, can't do that. Okay. Stretch all the way back. Whoa. Good. Okay, why don't you stand right here and have a seat right there. I'm going to do this a little bit faster. Okay. <clears throat> we don't necessarily have to stretch his quadricep. We could actually just massage the quads um, by pressing into here, because that'll do the same thing. If we activate the quadricep, it will send signals to the hamstring and loosen up the hamstring. But I know this is sore. Thank goodness he has a high pain threshold. I'm just assuming. <laughs> 
Okay, now we're going to come right here. Whoops, yeah. sorry. Okay, come right there. Good morning. Wow, this... What? Um, did you ever injure your uh, legs or hamstrings or pull muscles or something? Uh, probably. When you do demos, you want to get a little history before you bring someone up. But <laughs> right through here. So this is something that he should do on a regular basis, but you're stepping in the cord. Let me. Okay, now go ahead and just stand up and then kind of gently just see, see um, if you can go down a little bit better. That's better. Yeah. Okay, now have a seat. So you just very simply stretch the quads. Here's the problem. When you're that tight, both sides, there's something going on systemically inside the body with either calcium or potassium. So we need to find out if he's deficient in either one of those. So first, potassium um, is probably the most important mineral to prevent cramping. So do you, are you on medication that's pulling potassium out like a diuretic? No. High blood pressure medication? No. Okay, good. Um, do you crave sweets? Not usually. Okay. I tend to crave salt and stuff. Salt. Oh, okay. And how many cups of vegetables are you eating per day? Uh, three to four right now. Three to four? Okay. What you want to do is you want to have about seven to ten cups of vegetable per day because that will give him his uh, potassium that he needs. Do you crave any, uh, do you do any calcium? Yeah. You take calcium? Oh, uh, Actually, no, not especially. Okay. Do you crave, like, uh, cheese? Yes. So I would recommend eating a little bit more organic cheese um, because that would give them the calcium. I would go up, like, 7 to 10 cups of vegetable to get your potassium. Do you like avocados? Sure. Do you eat sea salt? Do you consume yes. sea salt? Okay. Those are the things that I would definitely recommend because he's just all just tight in the hamstring. Um, and do you have lower back pain? Yes. I would also press underneath right where I pressed on him, that will actually free up your lower back too. So go ahead and do that. Thank you for coming up. Does anyone have... Then what you can do is you can go on the couch and get your leg up like this and do one leg at a time and kind of stretch. Let's see, I guess you would be kind of laying on your stomach and then arching up. Lay on your stomach and arch your upper body so you're stretching this part. Does anyone have flat feet? Do you have flat feet? Can you come up here? Does anyone have tight um, calves? Okay, crampy calves? Okay. Don't ever stretch the calves if you cramp. <laughs> have a seat here. And slip off your shoes. Now, this is great for fallen arches, and this is good for tight calves, but no one ever does it. Uh, that's something different. So here's the thing. Um, all day long, you sit in front of a computer. How many sit in front of a computer? Or you stand, and you wear these shoes. And, and the feet, you start losing the arches on your feet. And then what happens is all that, you might gain weight, and all that extra weight, it just compresses those, those arches. So what would be the opposite muscles to the arch? The top part, right through here, it's actually your shins, your shin muscles. So what you're going to do is, yes, you're going to take the top of that and stretch it down. Yes, exactly. So um, let me show you this. You're going to take your toe, stretch it down this way, and relax. Stretch it down, relax. I think that everyone should do this one because all day long, you're, um, you're standing. You're in these shoes. This is really good if you sprain your ankle, too. So we come down this way, and then we do the other side. If you had shin splints, you want to do the opposite. You want to stretch the calves. Always do the opposite. Yeah, when you were stretching down here, this is stretching the top. When you stretch the calf, you would just stand on a stair step and go back this way. Yeah, but I don't have anything that I can do that on. Um, so that's how you would do for your feet. Now, um, tell me what your, your, your arches feel like. I mean, that 
doesn't hurt as much. The top, the top hurt, so they don't hurt as much. Okay. But my feet are so flat. Well. Yeah, we won't be able to fix your flat feet, but the pain from the muscles will be a lot better. So do that every single night, okay? Thank you for coming up. Does anyone... Go ahead. Yeah. It usually is. Some medication, especially the, uh, the, the blood pressure medication, pulls out um, potassium. And then you take a potassium, and they give you 40 milligrams. Well, you need 4,700 milligrams. Not, you, so you would have to have a whole bottle a day. So you have to do it from the greens. I recommend a kale shake. And if you would like the recipe, uh, Joyce will give you a card. Because you would mix kale and fruit and take that every single morning or at night when you get home. It's really good to get the potassium. So I want to thank you guys for coming. For those of you that would like just to check up for me, Joyce will give you a card, fill out your survey. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you next month. Thank you. Thank you.